Jumping straight into number 10, Bizarre Quasars. Quasars form when gas clouds swirl around black holes very quickly. All this energy causes them to come very hot, hot enough to emit light. Astronomers have discovered a group of 73 quasars that is over 6.5 times bigger than the average quasar group. This structure is over 4 billion light years wide and actually cannot be explained by the theory of general relativity. Theoretically, it shouldn't even exist. Number 9. You ever wanted more hours in a day? Due to the oceans, the Earth rotation is slowing down. This has had some bad effects, like the moon moving further away from the Earth. But more importantly, a slower rotation means a longer day. Every 100 years, it slows down enough to add 1.4 milliseconds onto the day. This means that about 200 million years ago, during dinosaurs, the day was actually only 23 hours long, and in 1820, the day was exactly 24 hours long. But now it's more like 24 hours and 2.5 milliseconds. Make them extra milliseconds count. Number 8 is the smell of the Milky Way. The Max Planck Institute released a paper talking about the smell of the Milky Way, and surprisingly, it didn't smell like chocolate. They suggested that it smelled of raspberries and would actually taste like rum. That was if you took off your helmet and didn't die, of course. They claim that they have detected a large amount of ethyl formate, which is found in raspberries and in the center of the Milky Way. Number seven, after the Earth's rotation, let's think bigger, let's think galactic years. While our year only takes 365 and a quarter days, a galactic year takes about 230 million years. This means that last time we were where we are now, there were dinosaurs on the surface of the Earth. Number six, stars have nurseries. You might send your kids to a nursery so they can grow up in a safe environment. Well, there are stellar nurseries where stars are born and grow up. It is estimated that 275 million stars are born and die every day. That means over 100 billion every year. That's a lot of stars. Number five is the Schwarzschild radius. This is less about an actual feature of the universe, more about what would happen if you applied it to somewhere. Oh, I don't know, say Earth. The Schwarzschild radius is the radius in which something will become a black hole. It is defined by r little s is equal to 2gm, all divided by c squared. It is about 2.95 kilometers per solar mass. That would mean that if the sun was squashed to 5.9 kilometers in diameter, it would be a black hole. But more interestingly, the Earth would have to be squished to about 9 millimeters or a third of an inch, and a person would have to be squished smaller than a proton. Number four, a super bright Andromeda. While we can't actually see the Andromeda galaxy very well with our own eyes, it kind of looks like every other star, but maybe slightly blurry. If it was brighter, it would dominate the night sky being six times larger than a full moon. It is about 2.5 million light years away and about 140,000 light years across, and it's heading straight for us. In about four billion years, we are set to collide. Number three is the intergalactic Kega. About 10,000 light years away from Aquila, there is an alcohol cloud, which is over a thousand times larger than our solar system, and it has enough alcohol in it to make 400 times 10 to the 24 drinks. That's a lot of drinks. Number two is possibly something you've heard of, the smell of the cosmos. It is impossible to smell space as it is a vacuum and there is nothing there to smell. But once you've been on a spacewalk, when you return and take off your suit, it's said that it smells like seared steak, hot metal or arc welding fumes. All of these make me think like something's been cooking, i.e. you, but scientists have suggested that it's actually a byproduct of dying stars. Number one is definitely an exoplanet that is covered in burning ice. Glycis 436b is a Neptune-sized planet that is about 33 light years away from the constellation Leo. Its surface would be covered in water, except the pressure forces the water to turn into ice. But then because the surface temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, it makes it superheated and when the ice melts, it skips the liquid phase completely and goes straight into a gas. So it's not actually on fire, it's just steam. 